In this screencast, we're going to present a brief overview of a continuous stirred tank reactor and describe why we would use it and then show briefly the mass balance. So typically, these are used for liquid phase reactions, or essentially a tank that's well stirred. I have a feed of a reactant coming in. Write it as R0, so the concentration, let's write it this way, the concentration of R, and at some temperature, T0, and now we have a concentration of reactant leaving, and a concentration of product, or more than one product, and they're at a final temperature. The idea of a continuous stirred tank reactor is this sufficiently well mixed that the exit conditions are identical to the reactor conditions. So what I mean by that is the concentration inside the reactor of R is identical to concentration leaving. The temperature inside the reactor is identical to the temperature leaving. And then this is a steady state. So it's in contrast to a batch reactor in which things are changing with time. Everything stays the same over time. There's no change in the exit concentration or the temperature. So if we look at a reaction of some reactant going to some product, typically we like to convert a lot of the reactant to product to simplify separations. However, the problem this creates in the CSTR is that the concentration of R is therefore going to be low if we convert, for example, 90% then the concentration of our reactant is only 10% of the feed concentration. And rates are typically proportional to concentration, maybe first order, maybe second order. So this low concentration would imply a low rate, which would mean we need a very big reactor, which would be very expensive. However, one potential compensating factor is that we're at the final temperature, which if it's an exothermic reaction, and we run it adiabatically, the final temperature can be high which means the rate constant can be high and therefore we would have a high rate of reaction because of the high temperature. Typically rate constants are exponentially proportional to temperature. So therefore a CSTR can be a very small reactor for operating at that final temperature. There's some unique aspects to a CSTR that are important in affecting kinetics, affecting product distribution. One is that the concentration of reactant where a reaction takes place is constant. In contrast to a batch reactor where the concentration continuously changes with time, here the concentration is constant and this is going then to affect, for example, product distribution. So you can imagine if we had multiple reactions, we're at a constant concentration. Of course, the temperature is also constant. And since in multiple reactions, they typically have different activation energy, this also will affect selectivity. So potentially, there's some advantage to having these constant on like a batch reactor where they continuously change with time. Of course, the other advantage, an important one, is we can run the reactor continuously. All right? And that's, of course, a big advantage. Now, additional aspect of a CSTR that might not be obvious when you first look at it is that all molecules do not spend the same time in the reactor. Namely, a molecule could enter and five seconds later leave the reactor, or a molecule can enter and move around for hours before leaving the reactor. And this also will affect the product distribution. So the constant concentrations, but the varying reaction times are both important. When we're looking at picking a reactor for a certain reaction, and for example, in polymerization reactions, these become very important in deciding whether it's a good choice of reactor. Why would we use a CSTR? Well, certainly one reason is we want mixing. We want intense agitation. And in particular, there's types of reactions such as emulsions or suspended solids where this would be critical. But 
for having uniform temperature, we need that mixing also. Another is that we can take advantage of auto refrigeration. And what this means is we can be at the boiling point for a mixture, and so we're removing product and some reactant as a vapor, and the heat of vaporization then will remove some of the heat of reaction to control the temperature. And then, of course, if we want certain selectivity by picking a temperature and running everything at the same temperature, we can improve selectivity. Or running at a low reacting concentration may favor a desired reaction over an undesired reaction. So what I want to do is just briefly present the material balance for the reactant in the CSTR. There are a number of other screencasts that go into more detail of solving problems with the material balances, looking at multiple reactions, looking at non-isothermal cases, etc. But now we'll just look at a steady state material balance. And so that means we have an accumulation term that's zero. So this is zero because we're at steady state. And we have flow into reactor. So I'll use F for molar flow rate. So the molar flow rate of R entering the reactor. And then the molar flow rate of R leaving the reactor. And then some rate of reaction of R times volume. So this molar flow rate would be the volumetric flow rate entering times the concentration of R entering the reactor. And then likewise, leaving is a volumetric flow rate leaving, which could be different. Concentration in reactor, which is the same as the concentration leaving. This rate of reaction, if it were first order reaction for the reactant R, would look like this, where remember this is the reactor exit concentration because the exit concentration is the same as the concentration in the reactor and this is evaluated at the exit temperature which is a constant so this is a brief introduction to continuous stirred tank reactors and then you can watch other videos that will go into the material balances the energy balances and specific examples in more detail.